welcome to the Boyfriends Podcast, where we help you find your circle and your man. Uh, again, I'm Jared D. King. I'm here with Saran and Renee and Melvin. Tony could not join us this week, but we have a great conversation ahead for you. And let's just jump into this one. The question this time that we're going to be helping out with will be, how do I create a circle of friends? Who wants to start us off with that one? I feel like you have some something brewing in there. That's yeah, so like honestly, mediums. I was really looking forward to your thoughts on it sure. because, like, I feel like you just like create such really good friendships and bonds, mm. like kind of going off of what you've said in like previous mm. episodes. So I would honestly love your take on this. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I guess my oh, well, I don't call everyone my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> that's exactly why I want to know. <laughs> so my core group of friends, we don't, I, we don't give each other Christmas gifts, we don't give each other birthday gifts. Uh, that's too much responsibility. Um, we know that we care about each other. So, and we're the group of friends that if we don't talk to each other for like ever, it's fine. And when we come together, it's like you never that we, we never left. Um, we seen each other cry. We gone through hell together, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, the main point though, is that we know each other's intent. So yeah. whenever there's some sort of like feedback or saying something that offends each other, Mm -hmm. we know that it's not because we're trying to be mean against each other or whatnot. We know it's just to better ourselves, right, as a team. Um, And I I do believe in protecting my aura, Mm -hmm. and I don't surround myself or even have chit-chat or talk with people that might counter that aura. You know, and I I see that the people I surround with strengthens just who I am as a person, right? Mm -hmm. So if there are individuals that are, like having conversations with them or, or, or just want to just hang out a lot, right? Like mm-hmm. it's, or, or, or just want to chill or, you know, I, I don't vibe too much with that, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's, you got to tell me what, what exactly you want. And then I, and it's the part where it sounds mean, but sometimes people, again, it goes back to the conversation of like them calling you your, their, your friend, which is fine. I can, you can call me your friend, but the expectation, that expectation of all of a sudden expecting me to be of your terminology of a friend, mm-hmm. right. I don't like that. Like gotcha. uh, right. we're not that close or, or, or whatnot. So yeah. So in my realm, it's, it, there are like fires that we went through together, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, and it, we, I can still go through, there's still, there's an individual I just met, but we went through those same fires and you know, they're yeah, in my inner, a, my like inner feelings. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. Sure. So how did you create that circle or was it something that was just no. kind of sure. there? Just watching other people's toxic friendships. <laughs> you know, honestly, it's like, like, honestly, like they're just, you know, growing your teens, 20s, and now my 30s, just mm-hmm. being, why surround yourself with people that you don't get along with? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why have conversations or just be in that atmosphere and breathe that air? Uh, I, I'm not a fan of that. I hate when I get toxic, right? I hate it when, when I, I, I just feel like it's a waste of time, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. I, I'd rather not be in that space, yeah. even professional, like in, in my, my professional world, I have close professional friends, like, I'm not friends, but professional people I work with. And then there are people that, if we're in a happy hour situation, I wouldn't even want to talk to you. You could say hi to me, and I would just say, peace out, right? Like, I don't waste time. I don't waste time on things like that. So I come across, like, kind of, like, a Yeah, so it's kind of like, why chat? Why waste my breath and my life with surrounding myself with anything I don't like? Right, mm-hmm. so that's mm-hmm. how I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, so the I'm just so now I just want to ask like your okay. your core group yeah is that something that I mean it sounds like there was um, some work put into that oh yeah but was it something because I know when my because when you talk about that core group mm. it reminds me of me and my friends growing up mm. but it wasn't anything that I had to make happen mm. it was more like. I live, me and my brother lived um, two doors down from another pair of brothers, Mm -hmm. and we were all about the same age, Mm -hmm. and we just kind of were friends, and we Mm -hmm. just kind of went through things together as we grew up. Mm -hmm. Um, So, was that kind of your experience, or are these different people that you've had to kind of pull together Mm -hmm. and say, hey, I want you to meet so-and-so? Oh, oh. Yeah, different eras, right? So it's not in one specific time period. But mm-hmm. also the unique thing is that their acquaintances, they themselves aren't, they may not be close to, with each other. Okay. Right? So in okay. my world, we could all hang out, right? Mm-hmm. My birthday comes up, like my birthday's coming up and they start texting me, hey, what, what's your plans? Things like that. What are you doing this year? 
Um, they're not asking who's going because they know the same group of people that's going to come out. Mm -hmm. So they themselves aren't like best friends with each gotcha. other. They gotcha. have their own universe, right? So I, I feel, I guess I'm lucky to have these individuals that are so close to me. Mm -hmm. um, I would say there's only two people that are close to each other, okay. right? And those are my two core, my inner three friends, mm -hmm. I guess, that knows everything mm -hmm. about me, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but then I have one really close friend that knows, I tell everything sexual with, right? Mm -hmm. Like she knows everything about my business and I know hers, mm -hmm. right? Like I just told... Side note, I, I was helping her try to brainstorm how to conceive in Disney World. <laughs> so, like, those type of situations, right? <laughs> Planning that. But, and then, you know, so, yeah. So, I'm, I feel like I'm lucky uh -huh. because I'm able to pull from all these different people. And they're not just one big clique, right? We can go hang out together and we respect, they respect each other. But I... It sounds so bad. It sounds like I'm the center of the universe, but like well, in that, you're in that the world, of your I mean, universe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm lucky that I have people for every single thing that I you need. know. And I think I think yeah. what I'm what I'm hearing is mm -hmm. you know I wouldn't I would not say I would not define that yeah. the same way as I guess mm. the traditional circle of friends sure. where mm -hmm. everybody knows each other and everybody uh, knows each other's mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, so yeah. it's a little bit different, yeah. but. But that's but what you're saying is that is it's extremely I think, valid. As I think well. that's a falsity anyway. Yeah, you uh, think so? Like, well, not not you, mm -hmm. but just saying we have this group of we have this circle of friends and everybody knows everyone's business. I think that's not a truth. Okay, for for anyone, like mm -hmm. even myself, like I have a lot of friends or a lot of what I would consider best friends. Mm -hmm. Um, but. Each of them knows something mm -hmm. separately about mm -hmm. me that the other one doesn't know. Exactly. You know, I, and, it's, and it's not to say that mm -hmm. I can't tell them, but it's mm -hmm. just I have this friend for that reason, or I have this friend for that reason, so I confided in in them for that specific moment, mm -hmm. for whatever. But. Honestly, I do have that you know close circle of friends where like everyone knows each other's business, and the only reason that it works mm -hmm. and that we've been friends for so long and like held this circle is because it's like it's more like a triangle it's just like me and my two best friends from california like we've been friends since well i've been friends with christina since like the seventh grade then we met kat uh freshman uh, not freshman senior year of high school and we just like we just clicked like we literally tell each other everything like mm -hmm. they know everything about me i know everything about them and I can say that confidently <laughs> honest like it's like they I feel like they know too much about me so like like so if, if almost, something like no literally if some, like, like literally if something goes wrong between term? us oh my god like it's they have it. so much dirt on me like well, they could, a term for that they or something could like ruin my, yo they can <laughs> ruin my life Easily, it's like you almost have to stay <laughs> friends with them. It's just a little bit, yeah. yeah. It's like there's no way out now. You're no, in too deep. I, like yeah. honestly, we uh, all three of us have changed so much. I feel super lucky that I've had like that really close circle of friends mm. forever. And honestly, that circle started off as like a duo. Like it was just me and Christina for the longest time. And I think that's how close friends kind of start. I feel like it starts oh. off as like duos honestly and then like you just like you just like start picking up stragglers along mm. the way and it either becomes a, <laughs> and then we're gonna just... keep you or we're gonna you yeah know, you're gonna be that friend yeah. that we hit up when we hit you up mm. yeah basically. you know i mean i think you know the, the person asking this question is kind of feeling like they're missing out on something yeah like they don't um, have a circle like they don't have a circle like they may mm -hmm. have close friends mm -hmm. they may have they may ha even have what you have mm -hmm. Um, on some level, mm. but they don't have what is, I guess, glorified on TV mm. and um, I guess what, you know, you sit around the table with like eight people mm. uh, at brunch or whatever. You know, Unrealistic. Like that kind I think, of thing. Yeah, I think, mm. like, I think that's what I was more so referring to as like, it's eight of us. It's unrealistic to believe that mm -hmm. we're all gonna be yeah. mm -hmm. best friends, or I'm gonna like mm -hmm. know everything about all eight of these people. Mm -hmm. It's it's just. But I think you that, would, but I mean, but you would hang out with them, and some of them would hang out with each other without you. Yeah. Right. Definitely. And so I think the person, I you know, whoever who whoever would be asking this question would kind of look at that as like the ideal. Uh, circle of friends like you don't have to know everything about everybody mm -hmm. but mm. there's a there's a network that you have um where there's always somebody that you can talk to or always somebody mm -hmm. that you can kind of mm -hmm. i guess lean on in some way and i just want to clarify the question it's uh how do i get 
this circle of friends. Yeah, right? how do I, well, how do I create a circle of friends? Mm. Honestly, I think it's just you have to work with each person separately. Like you can't take it on as a group project. Yeah, I feel definitely. like if you want to build like a group of friends, the effort has to be between like maybe like I I think like two to three people. Meaning like you have to kind of connect with that one person and you know make a really great friendship and then kind of like move on to like and then at the same time make a connection with another person and then just like have those two people meet Mm -hmm. and then you you kind of got it started and then maybe Mm -hmm. those two people you know are able to connect or some maybe maybe they just don't vibe and so then you're just like if you are really looking to build that net with that network of friends you got to put in the work you have to get to know people and then you have to like say like hey like have you met um melvin yet like he is so cool i feel like you would like really like him so like you know if i wanted to add melvin to my circle of friends you know like i invited you to the halloween party which you're not attending I'm, and we're I apologize. beefing I apologize. we are beefing <laughs> um and so like i would like i want you guys to meet like my other group of friends so like maybe you guys would get along with them and mm-hmm. i think i think you would um tyler's amazing so is tara and ellie like these are Tara and Ellie are people that I just met and I feel like they're like just kind of like becoming in like mm-hmm. that circle of friends. Mm-hmm. But I, I really I really feel like it's just making those connections with different people and then bringing those people together. That's mm-hmm. the I feel like that's literally the only way to make yeah, you know, I, like, oh, yeah. I will echo that because I feel like recently because I just had I just had a game night um, and I kind of brought like two disparate group I don't know if that's the right word I'm just using vocab today but whatever (laughs) I'd brought two different sets of people in and they hit it off really well um and I've never really had that happen Mm -hmm. like I've always tried to make something happen Mm -hmm. but it didn't it never really went quite that way um I think that you have to consider uh mixed company Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. like you kind of have to figure out like if the personalities are going to mesh um so that's a big thing as well um but what has been your have you had any bad experiences yes in friend groups can we talk about that i yeah i feel like (laughs) i hate when this happens when you like when this happens i get so mad when you introduce people and then they vibe so hard that, like, then you become the odd man. Mm. <laughs> that has happened to me before. It is not fun. <laughs> I've had it where, so um, I was actually going to bring this up, so I'm glad you, it's like a good segue. But for me, I remember when I was younger, I would have separate friend groups. So I was on the step team, but I was also in the band. And I was also in the Black Student Association and so on and so on and so on. And so there were different people in each group, and I would, I don't want to say change myself or change who I was, but I would kind of cater to each group and be this different person. And so eventually I'm like, okay, I'm spreading myself too thin. Let's try to just mesh all these people together. And it definitely didn't work out because, and to my point is I was being a different person around all those people and I wasn't being authentically myself. Mm -hmm. And I think that's another key. You need to be who you are and you're going to attract the type of people that you want around you. So if you can, if, it doesn't matter if you're really different from my other friend. If I'm being who I am and you like me, yeah. it, it should. And it doesn't always work that way, but it should. These two people should be able to mesh because if you are comfortable around me and they're comfortable around me, it, it will just make sense that they should be comfortable around each other. And I think that's another way to build your circle. Just being who you are, mm-hmm. you're going to attract the people that you want around you. I, I hear that. And I, like, I'm 90% there with you, but I feel like if you have one person who, who, like, um, is, like, this biker dude, and then you invite, you know, this really buttoned up person. Excuse me, I don't know what... <laughs> so, okay. oh, go ahead. I, I want to... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. A cough do, drop, do you want to break for a cough drop? It's okay. Woo! <laughs> Hold on, I think. Yeah, just oh. give it a second. <laughs> Lift your hands up. Lift your hands. Reach, reach for the sky. Arch up. Arch up. I'm like <laughs> laughing and coughing at the oh, same sorry. time. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, what was I saying? You have a biker and a button up guy. Yeah. yeah. So if you have like these two people who they may be comfortable with you, but you know that 
you can. Well, oh, you we can you tell. should be the. I, for me, I would think that you would be the middle ground because for whatever reason you're friends with the biker guy and whatever reason you're friends with this button up guy. So mm-hmm. what do you have in common with both of these people that should? It's some. It's something in you that attracts these two different kind of people, and I think that that's what you should focus on yeah. on bringing those two people together. <clears throat> Not necessarily their differences, mm-hmm. but the similarities. Mm-hmm. I also think that like different friends kind of bring out a different personality in yeah. you. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Like that biker dude can bring out like your more adventurous side. Yeah. That button up dude. He's really good at scheduling, and you love that. <laughs> <laughs> that is not a good friend quality. I mean, that's a good friend quality. That's an amazing but friend quality. that is not a quality that I'm like, does he, does he, is he a good well, scheduler? Well, look, sometimes no, you, I you, you want to let somebody Ooh. else take the reins yeah. and set stuff up. Like, that is actually my, a good No, quality. my friend Tyler, <laughs> she is so type A, and I love it. The amount of spreadsheets that this girl makes. Oh, my <laughs> God. She was stressing me out. I love it. I love Tyler it. stresses me out already. <laughs> Yeah, I would say just, you know, new experiences with new people, right? Not going in as if, oh, like, I love board games or I, I love ghost hunting or paranormal investigating. But, like, going on trips with completely different spaces, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I was able to join my friend. They went to New Orleans for the first time. That's and dangerous. we all, yeah. what? That's dangerous. Okay. I love New Orleans. I got my phone stolen in New Orleans. But, it, but, you but you're going on trips with people that you don't. What well, kind? No. Like no. not real friends, I but I, I got to know them better on the okay. trip. Yeah. Okay. So it's, I mean, yeah. it's a risk. It's it a is. risk. I mean, yeah. if it were and if it worked out, then it's, then it worked out yeah. for the better. But yeah, and yeah. I guess where I'm going at is like sometimes for me, forced friendships don't work for me. Mm-hmm. If I'm going in and it's already getting forced, I instantly turn off. Right, and like, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna. I, it's forced. I'm not. Even, my brain's not even open <clears> to <throat> doing something. But more so, the bonds and experiences. Right. If I'm connecting with someone and doing something. Uh, we have a bond together because we did something together that was different, right? So I met a few people uh, doing something, right? Uh, now when I see them, oh, remember we did that thing? What else have you been up to? And then we, we reconnect and talk about other things that were bonded us from that. Um, but yeah, yeah, so, you know, I think... So, I mean, there's... Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Water? What's going on? I'll be back. So, I'm not dead. <laughs> 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 no, also not fully alive. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but you were talking about mm. uh, going on a trip with some people sure. that you kind of found some things in common mm. with them. And I think that that's... Um, dangerous. I did think it was dangerous <laughs> yeah. to go out with a... To go out with people that you don't know, it's like it's like you you're really flipping a coin there. Sure, sure. It, but like it's the best kind of coin toss. Though. It's not when it goes bad. It's the worst. It's the when it goes worst. It just depends on as long as you have your exit plan, you're good. I mean, there's no exit plan in New Orleans. Like he's from Philly. Like what's gonna? <laughs> right. Where's he gonna go? <laughs> it's New Orleans. You don't really have to go mm. anywhere. That's true, but. <laughs> Also, with New Orleans, like, that kind of trip, like, mm. you can make friends, like, even if it really doesn't famous. work out, like, with the people that you oh, go yeah. with, you can make friends with, like, anyone there. Like, mm. you could find, like, your people there. Yeah. Like, I I get the, I definitely get the appeal of just, like, you know, like, getting some random people together and, like, let's just go on a trip for shits and giggles. Mm. Um, I def, I, I could see, that could be fun. I think I that mean, would be fun. yeah. I would be worried. I would be really worried though, because I've just gone on trips with friends and I'm let just go like, and let God. Okay. By the end of the day, I definitely like, have some friends that I do not go on trips with anymore because of previous trips. Why? It's just I, I'm not a planner. Let me say mm. that, but mm. I do not like bad plans either. Like, mm. so if I'm on a trip and shit is going bad, like you don't have a place for us to sleep or. Oh, you do so have a place for us to sleep, but it's like seventy of us. I'm like, mm. no, or you know, like you just, it just, I don't like bad plans. Mm. But I'm not the planner. I will say that. So, what I was trying to say is that you found some things in common with mm. these people, and that is, and the commonalities is kind of what bonded you guys together. I feel like mm. we're using that word a lot on this sure. show, but yes, <laughs> bonds, bonds, bonds is. I love the word. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I also think that like n- not just common. Commonalities. <laughs> Not just commonalities. I, my best friends, this is going to sound so bad, but like, I think that to really be close with someone, they have to ex- accept the good and the bad mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, in you. And the best, the, the best friends that I've ever had are people that I share my trauma with. Mm. 
<laughs> those are the closest friends. Whenever we like have like a good cry sesh, mm -hmm. um, whenever we have like a really nice heart to heart, if I tell them like, you know, I, if I get real about like my fears and setbacks mm -hmm. and like, like everything that's like gone wrong in my life and how I feel about it, I, like, I feel like those are like yeah. the best mm -hmm. friends. I mean, like, and I think that that's like a key piece of building relationships just in general it's just yeah. like opening up and kind of really like if you can really see like everything if you can see the ugly stuff mm -hmm. and we're still good then that's you know that's how you know you've got a good friend or a good uh relationship even romantic relationship you know it's about opening up i have a question uh, yeah for everyone yeah and this is kind of weird so what is the requirement for your circle or your circle of friends to have? And I'll go first so you can get what I mean. And this is going right. to be a weird one. Yeah. Um, but for me, to be a part of my, like, close circle, you have to be okay with the fact that sometimes, and most of the times, I don't answer the phone. <laughs> I don't text back. I, or I will text back, or I, but it might be not in the timing that you want. I won't answer the phone a lot of the times. And it's mostly because I don't feel like talking or I don't, I'm not in the place where I want to talk to you or like whatever, you know, like it just it is nothing personal. It's just a personal feeling. So I always tell my friends, you got to have thick skin I, when it I comes to that. I know that personally. <laughs> I feel like I have already too. Like he was supposed to pick me up. And, oh my God. And oh I was, my God. I, she texted me at like four and I think I texted back at like right. I was like, hey, I'm about to leave the house. <laughs> Oh, like, I'm and sorry. I'm like almost about to like okay maybe I should like catch the bus to like this sketchy ass neighborhood <laughs> I'm sorry I'm a really bad texter I own it and I, I I actively try to work on it but I do fall back into my ways it's fine like but it's fine. I tell no, my my if you're gonna be in my circle that is a requirement like mm. you have to just understand that I sometimes I might not answer the phone I don't know if I have like a requirement requirement. I just like don't be a bitch. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I guess what he's saying is more like, is there something that people will have to put up with, with you? Like, is there is there something about you that your oh. friends will have? Don't to annoy. Put up don't with? get annoyed when I cry a lot. Mm. <laughs> that okay. is my. That's my thing. Like I cry a lot because like I have to cry to know that I'm feeling something. I know that sounds really stupid, but that is just how I deal with I know, emotions. I know a lot of people. Like yeah. I need to cry. To get it out. Do you cry when you're angry? Yes, sad, I cry. I cry, I cry. I cry when I'm angry, when I'm sad, when I'm happy, so when I'm scared. Every time. I don't and cry at all. I'm not. I'm like you. I don't <laughs> cry either. So, I like, can count on one hand how many I, people I have seen me. I probably like took your tears and just stuffed it into me. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I can like count on one hand how many people have ever seen me cry, and. Probably in my lifetime, how many times I've like cried. I feel like so many people have seen me cry. Like a lot of people have seen me like have a mental breakdown. On SEPTA, you've probably seen me. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you've probably seen me. <laughs> uh, did you have one? Cause I, yeah. I, it's taken me some, some I guess time to think. For me, is I'm pretty morbid. I'm a morbid guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I, you know, death, conversations about mm -hmm. death. Mm -hmm. um, knowing when someone's um, going some, through something. I'm attracted to like negative energy, not ne not toxic negative energy, mm -hmm. but like when someone is in the depressed mode, or I, I think maybe that's pertaining to my work anyway, not profit. Mm -hmm. I'm just attracted. If someone's jolly and happy and all good, I'm not attracted to that. I'm like, you're good. Peace you out. don't need you me. Yeah. yeah, but when you just you just get the vibe that someone needs your help. Mm -hmm. I love depressed people. <laughs> like, oh my like, god, who's so sad? Like, I you was just feel made it. for you. Right, you just you just you just know there's more there, and then. I think that's when you work in nonprofit or community work. You're just attracted to that side. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. my friends, they know that I'm the only one in almost my friends group that works in nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing that to get used to is just that I'm just into wow. that, yeah. that realm, right? Okay. Would you say that your friends would need to know that Saran is not going to? Hmm, I don't know. How do I put this? Is Saran is Saran is not going to be the one that's like. Uh, that's calling me for good stuff. But if I need help or if I need, you know, companionship or I need a shoulder to cry on, that's the guy. It's both. No. Okay. Yeah, I'm a fun guy. <laughs> like, no, I'm, I'm not saying, like, yeah. I didn't mean it like that. Sadness just... only. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think, so, like, yeah, he's definitely, like, really emo guy. in this bitch. Yeah. So I can see why you would want 
to be like you have a lot of positive energy mm -hmm. so it makes sense that you would want to be around someone who Ooh. is not exuding that because you could do it for them and maybe even bring them out of whatever they're going through you just know? want to know yeah. you know like, I if they want to share it, it don't, could yeah. bounce out with your mm -hmm. personality definitely mm -hmm. so you got one Jared? i i mean I'm like easy breezy over here. I got one for you. Oh, uh. He said it earlier while we weren't filming. He was we weren't filming when he said this, but he says that, you know, he doesn't have a problem cutting cutting his feelings off. I think that's something that, you know, people should know. <laughs> like yeah, Okay, so yeah, yeah, I guess that would be, I guess that would be one. I don't have I don't have an issue um I can be very unemotional mm -hmm. about stuff. Mm -hmm. I can be very um I can be very cold. Mm -hmm. uh, if it, I, I can, di I'm like I won't. I'm not, I'm not like naturally cold, but when I get to a point where Aloof. I'm just like I don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. that aloofness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and when I get to a point where I'm like I don't care about this anymore, mm -hmm. it might be. It sounds like it feels like an f you to the other person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's really gotcha. not. It's just. I have no more capacity for this. Uh, I mean, that I is essentially, yeah. that is essentially an F you. That is kind of like an that. emotional fuck you. <laughs> I, mean, I, just, I, I just want had, you to know that. I just had a Facebook status post today. Mm -hmm. Let me know if it's the same. Okay. It said, just so you know, just because I don't like you does not mean I dislike or hate you. I'm just neutral. Basically. Right? I don't, yeah. like, you don't, I don't I, get it. Right? So it's like, <laughs> when you, like, I don't have, I'm in I a neutral state. Like I, I don't. I don't I, like you, but I, I don't, don't like dislike you. you. Yeah, you're just a neutral yeah. person. You're a person. You're a person. I'm that's, indifferent. Oh, okay. I'm indifferent. <laughs> and then I guess sometimes people may take that the wrong way. I wasn't sure if that was similar. I, yeah, yeah, I think yeah, people yeah. definitely could take that the wrong way. Yeah. Now I feel like I know what my psycho. <laughs> Melvin's like, yeah, you guys. Like, <laughs> no, I feel like now I know what my psycho was talking about about my Virgo like getting to me because like I'm such an A or B person sometimes I'm just like I either like you or I don't so okay. what do you tell the person who doesn't who feels the opposite of you that person that says I I don't uh like going out to make but I do want to have a circle I don't I don't like going out to make new friends but I want to have a circle mm. <laughs> you're shit out of luck mm. <laughs> <laughs> like they're not gonna come to your door <laughs> they don't they don't just like do show you up your friend deliveries <laughs> they don't make I mean I'll, Actually, you could go on Bumble BFF uh -huh. if that. What's Bumble BFF? So they have, um, so instead of like finding a relationship on Bumble, you can find a friend. Oh my god! Oh, oh my god! So you can do wow. that. They have if, an app if, for like, everything. If, if I will also do. say, like, if you're if you're the if you're the type that doesn't necessarily enjoy going out and making friends, mm -hmm. you can still put yourself out there and just take it one step at a time or one person mm -hmm. at a time it doesn't have to be yeah yeah it doesn't ha you don't have to be like me you don't have to like look at a person and be like you're my friend <laughs> <laughs> because that can get exhausting sometimes yeah. i will admit <laughs> i did want to go back to because i think we we kind of got off the topic because we were oh. talking about the biker guy and oh, really yeah. like oh, oh yes buttoned up guy um and i think i was I, what i was going to say was you can bring them both together and they may be fine with each other in the moment, mm -hmm. but bringing two different, if, if you, like if you're mixing company like that, I just don't feel like. But it's your circle, it's not their circle. Mm. Yeah. So that's what you have to remember. It's yours, it's, you're the universe of yours. You're, yeah, the, you're yeah. the center of your circle. And okay. so they're going to have their own circle. Yeah. They're going to have who they are close to and they know when they hang out with you, they may or may not have to hang out with that guy mm -hmm. that they don't know that well, but he's cool enough, you know, or whatever. Yeah. And sometimes it doesn't work out like that. And so, you know, okay, these two people <coughs> can't be in the same room together. Yeah. But I still say, like, and it's not a narcissistic thing to say that I'm the center of my universe mm -hmm. because yeah, no, like, you, you're only going to have your point of view for everything, mm -hmm. you know. I can't tell you how you feel, vice versa, for, for sure. everyone, yeah. you know. But, um, yeah, like, I know I have friends that don't necessarily like each other, but it doesn't matter because they like me. Ever, and, I don't think I've ever had a friend that doesn't like my other friend. Really? No. Oh yeah. I definitely have friends that, and I would consider them my really close best friends, but I know that they oh, don't all no, get along. I lied, but I can't talk around on the podcast, but there was a situation because <laughs> <laughs> just in case they listen to this, I don't want to say anything. <laughs> but it's okay. You know, they don't have to get along because as long as they're mature enough to, mm -hmm. to, 
put all of that aside because mm-hmm. they're my friend, you know, and I think that's what's most important because yeah. it's your circle, you know, and then when they so don't So it only them. serves you when you bring these people together? Kind of. Yeah. Yes and no. Honestly, I feel like if you brought the biker and the button-up dude around each other enough times, they're going to start to have things in common because they're going to start to have, like, the same experiences mm. with you. Mm-hmm. Nine times out of... You will find something that you relate to someone on anything like you'll you'll, you just have to find that one Mm -hmm. thing you'll latch on to it for dear life and then you 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 just you eventually form a friendship honestly like if again if the biker dude and the bun up dude hang out with each other enough times Mm -hmm. a french a some sort of friendship is gonna happen like gravity yes there's three gravities and there's things circling around us Mm -hmm. sometimes you're someone over here is gonna grab like how i got connected with you Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. like it was like that Mm -hmm. yeah Wait, we don't know this story. Yeah, how did you guys meet? (laughs) I met, uh, well, I had a friend... I I don't I'm not I'm not really comfortable mentioning people's names. Yeah, I you, try you not don't to have name to. Drop you don't so have much. to name. But drop. um, but yeah, I have a I have a friend. Yeah. Drink so much. <laughs> Hi, Tyler. <laughs> Christina, Katarina. Look, I know you're all. <laughs> family tree for you right now. Your whole uh, friend group is like famous right now. Um, you're welcome. Uh, but yeah, no, we I, I know a guy. He's part of the uh, what was it? Toastmasters. Toastmasters. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I believe that that's how you two know each other. And I had reached, I had reached out to him because I was looking for hosts for the uh, podcast. And he said, you know, yeah. Saran might might be a good. And, and I was like, I was like, I think. And now, now yeah. knowing, <laughs> it's so funny because yeah. now knowing how you consider certain people your friends, and you know, you kind of, <laughs> I can understand why you said like maybe. They like you didn't really know them all that well. Yeah, like, yeah. You, I mean, yeah. They, you're still friendly with them, but yeah. you know. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, I remember when we were talking initially? Is like, you sure you want me? Like, I don't even know you. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then we were chatting. I was like, do you want to talk on the phone first? Yeah, so you yeah, know, yeah. like, like how I talk. Like, but yeah, yes, yeah, so I, th- I think that's that's always a concern. Is like, um, you know, and then we got to meet in person, so that mm-hmm. was great. But yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's how it all worked out. But yeah, that gravitational, and I feel like I, I've I've actually never even verbally talked to them. Mm-hmm. I verbally talked to you. Oh, yeah, oh, wow. Yeah, okay. so I was like, that's interesting. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. That's how all that works, yeah. Oh, and see, some people out. just click. And honestly, I feel like this podcast, like, somehow just became, like, a, a circle, circle of, of friends. Time, yeah. Like, it really did. Um, even though Tony's not here, so we're missing a portion oh, of the no. circle. We miss you, Tony. But, like, yeah, no. <laughs> one for my homies. Four out for the Four one out for my homies. <laughs> He's not dead, though. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to throw it back out there. That like it is really important to always always be yourself. Like do not yeah. hide who you are mm-hmm. when you're mm-hmm. trying to make friends because it's never gonna work. Um, I personally I'm saying that because I I used to do that. Like I would change myself to try to fit in circles mm-hmm. that I didn't really want to be a part mm-hmm. of. I just yeah. thought that that's what I wanted. You know, even when sure. it comes to like um, for so I'll give an example. Um, I was. I wanted to be an alpha. I wanted to pledge. And when I was in college, I wanted to be an alpha so, so bad. Now, it didn't work out, not because I couldn't, they didn't pick me or anything like that. It's financial issues on their Mm -hmm. part, not mine. I'm going to just shut up before I get in trouble. (laughs) But um, anyway, so I wanted to be an alpha so bad, but they hated me because they could tell I was gay. Oh. I was trying to be down low. I wanted I didn't want See, them to know. Like I just got so irritated that like I want to find them now and like <laughs> give them the sternest talking to like how could you not like Melvin? Like I wanted to be a part of this group so bad that I went and got a freaking girlfriend just oh, to wow. prove to them that oh. I am not gay. Like I'm like oh. Please like me. Please be put me a part of this group. Mm-hmm. And whatever for whatever reason it didn't happen mm-hmm. and I just it's like a light bulb click and I was like I was trying so hard to be their friend yeah. and they didn't even wow. fucking like me like, yeah you were like losing yourself like sure. yeah I wasn't I wasn't being I think to me I was mm. gonna have to put up this facade for the rest of whenever you know like for my entire mm. entire college year which thank God that that happened because mm-hmm. that's actually how I met some of my closest mm. friends through that experience is because mm-hmm. they were going through the same thing mm. or you know they felt the same experience like you can't be who you you really are mm-hmm. because you're trying to be a part of some group that doesn't even really like the real you. Yeah, so right. I think that's really important. Yeah. So yeah. like when you're creating those close 
Uh, like when you want to create that close circle of friends, your advice is to not give up yourself in the process. Please don't. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's really good advice. Absolutely. Yeah. I know when I was in high school, I went to Kappa, High School for Creative and Performing Arts. Loved the experience, but there were only three Asian kids mm. in my uh, graduating class. Mm -hmm. um, and the school was, you know, pretty much black, white, Asian, uh, and some uh, and Latino. Uh, but in my situations, like, you know, I came out of college when I was 15, just, you know, and just trying to figure out myself and my own identity as an Asian American, Cambodian American, mm -hmm. and just not being able to, like, fully be myself mm -hmm. you know what yeah. i'm trying to say mm -hmm. because everyone just doesn't understand you and all this other random stuff so like i was stuck not stuck but i was with a group of friends um like in my yearbook right you'll open to the page and i'm standing with like these people that i barely even knew that i was kind of like had to stand with because they were friends with the other people mm -hmm. you know what i mean so now like there's this weird thing where i internally <laughs> i'm like i don't even fucking know these people <laughs> like, oh. like why am i in this picture with them you know what i mean so things like that happens and you know of course leaving that you know not and I hate the idea of being a token, which I wasn't. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. Some people just played into the token role. Ugh. I definitely mm -hmm. wasn't. Um, but yeah, and then, you know, just being in, in grade school through before high school was all black and uh, Puerto Rican friends. High school came, that was a mess. And I went to Penn State, and that's where I found my Asianness, you know, explored my own my Asian identity. <laughs> Thank God for college. You know what I mean? Thank yeah, God for, for college. For sure. <laughs> you know, college is awesome, right? You get to really find yourself. For sure. Yeah. You know, and I went to Penn State, right? Middle of nowhere, culture shock. Um, of all white, right? It's majority white. Oh. Um, you know, all that Gosh. stuff. But anyway, what I'm trying to get is, <laughs> what I'm try, yeah, right, maybe we should have a college episode. <laughs> but like, um, you know, just going through those things of what you were saying, being genuine to yourself. Mm -hmm. I think that resonated with me because in high school, I couldn't even figure out just be myself. I, every hard. conversation was just not hitting. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You really know? Hard. So yeah. yeah. And I, I have the, having to represent the whole Asian identity that's this a whole lot of pressure. It's a lot. Yeah. It's like, a lot come on. Of pressure. Yeah. 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 I mean, and I think, you know, I, I feel like as as a as a black man, mm -hmm. you know, I kind of I kind of go through that same mm -hmm. oh, yeah. kind of thing. Like mm -hmm. you kind of you kind of have to represent in in these spaces and yeah. you don't really sometimes you don't feel like you have the range to like <laughs> you <laughs> to range. really go there. You know the what range. I'm saying? Yeah. Like I'm not, you know, I'm not a, a what do you call it? like a um African American studies professor. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I can speak to certain things, sure. but I may not be able to say it the yeah. right way. So yeah, mm -hmm. I get exactly yeah. what you're saying is yeah. what I'm trying to say. Um, but uh, we have a couple minutes left, mm -hmm. and uh, I guess I just want to run down some of the um, some of the advice. We got a lot of good advice in this episode. Of course, be yourself uh, is definitely one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, then we also got I love this line. You're the center of your circle. Mm. I think that's really strong. I think yeah. you said that, Melvin. He said it first. Oh, you said yeah, it first. I said it? You did. Oh, oh okay. No, okay. I said you made it sound better. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to remember to write names next to these. At some point. <laughs> um, invite friends and kind of let them do the work. Was that Renee? Yeah. Yeah. So and eventually, it's gonna happen. Like if you have people hang out with each other enough times, you're gonna be friends. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Hopefully. yeah, Hopefully. and so it doesn't have Hopefully. to be, it doesn't have to be, basically, what you're saying, it's like, it doesn't have to be so hard, mm -hmm. you yeah. just kind of bring but, the people that you love together, and whatever yeah. happens, basically, happens. whatever happens, happens. Yes. Yeah, and if, if, even if you're, like, struggling to even, like, make the first friend, because, like, kind of, I think you brought it up, like, some people just, like, aren't as friendly as me, and aren't, like, like, you know, wanting to go out there and make so many connections, you know, go on Bumble BFF, mm -hmm. just, like, Swipe, find a random person, like, all right, cool. But like, let's hang let's out. Try this out. I've never, let's try I've it out. never done that. Before, I've been, but I've been that's wanting so to. But I'm I keep interested but, in the Bumblebee BFF. Yeah, yeah Bumblebee. We'll have BFF. to talk more about that. We'll okay, talk more we'll, about we'll that. bring that up later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess I have, I have here consider personalities. Um, I think that was my own. Just yeah, because that was I'm your just own. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that was my own. I, but I will, I will, I will backtrack on that a little bit because you know, different. Like we said, you're the center of your own uh, circle, and different personalities, whether or not they become friends and are close friends outside of that instance, it doesn't really doesn't really matter all that much. Yeah. Um, as long as they're there for you and they can get along in the moment. Um, I also think it's good to remember that it doesn't have to be sex in the city. <laughs> like you don't <laughs> have to have like the the friend group that 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 show makes no sense. Yeah. That well, that friendship 
would have never those friendship that that circle would have never lasted in the real world. Um, let's be honest. Okay, that that's but never going to happen. That's what's glorified, and that's what, and that's what a lot of people are looking yeah, for when they a, when they're upset about not having a circle. Yeah. Um, and so we kind of have to get. And that's another good point. It's like we kind of have to get out of the mindset of what um what is seen on TV or what or what you're kind of projecting into other spaces. You might see a whole gaggle of people together, but that doesn't mean that they all are like that, that they're all best friends and that, you know, three of them will splinter out and go shopping and two others will go have tea and then they'll come back and, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's not... It doesn't like, have to be that way. Right. It really doesn't. Like. Right. So you kind of there's a little bit of a shift in mindset that should happen there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would also say... Uh, Opposites attract, but similarities cement. Yes. So, yeah. So when you when you're out meeting people, that's um, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's the t-shirt right there. You you become you become friends. You become friends with people. But if you want to cement some friendships, you if you want to create that circle for yourself, find what you have in common. And uh, if you have different friends who have who you know have some things in common. Bring them together and um, focus. Make the make that commonality the focus of the event or the focus of your conversation, at least to start. Um, so that that would be my advice to you. Um, I think we've kind of covered. Yeah, I think yeah, we covered it. All. Just be yourself. Don't expect sex in the city. Because it's not real. <laughs> it's not real. Even though it's my gay childhood, she just ruined. <laughs> oh my god! It's everyone's it. childhood that I ruined. You've never seen never Sex in the that. City. Okay, just watch no. the movies. Did you just say you never seen it either? Huh? I need y'all to just watch <laughs> Sex in the City, the movies. I read the book. The one and the, the two. Yeah. I didn't know there was a book actually. Wow. <laughs> I know, I'm a little embarrassed. Um. So yeah. So mm-hmm. thank you for watching, boyfriends, and you've been connected. What, what, what was wait, what was the line? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get it straight. We're gonna, We're gonna get, get straight. you guys a text.